Christ's house. Amen? Amen. It's good to feel His presence. And it's good to be around godly people. Is it hot in here to y'all or is it just me? I'll get Rick to turn that air down a little bit. My granddaughter said unless uh, uh, you, you sweat, you're not a true preacher. So. Thank you, man. That's good. Well, back more towards you, yeah. Caddy Corner. I know I'm big, but I'm not that big. <laughs> That's perfect right there. Thank you. Amen and amen. All right. Today, my message is, the cross has the final word. Can somebody say amen? amen. The cross has the final word. Yes, and I really, this message is, I was preparing for it last night. Uh, the, the man that we had been praying for it on Wednesday night, uh, Ted Oviatt, that brother of mine that passed away, uh, he passed away, I think it was Tuesday. And, uh, you know, I've really never said this before or done a message where but I, I just wanted to dedicate this message to him and his uh, his life and what he meant to me and he also meant a lot to this church and uh, he used to love this church he'd come for a few years and uh, he had left but he got involved in another church but I sure do miss him but uh, how many know we got to keep right on going, amen? amen. And uh, one of the things that uh, Ted's wife, Glenda, uh, she loved her daddy. And uh, she says, well, I just can't, I can't uh, go on. I just can't go. And her mama told her, says, well, you've got to put one foot in front of the other. And that's how we get through grief sometimes. Yeah. One foot in front of the other. Yeah. It's just like with Miss Jean. I, I still to this day have my times where I cry over her being gone. And I, I know yesterday I was, uh, well, yesterday was a good day to clean the house if you had the time. Because you sure couldn't go outside, could you? And uh, she, Jean, at times, she used to buy me these little uh, John Deere tractors, these toys. And I was doing something, and I happened to look and seen two of them in the, China cabinet and it just got to me I just I said Lord but the Lord reminds says Ricky where she's at right now is she is she is having her time and you know I look forward to going to heaven but I don't want to go today reason being we've got work to do can somebody say amen, amen. but anyway the title of this message is the cross has the final word I want to read the definition of what the world says the cross is it says, the principal symbol of the Christian religion, recalling the crucifixion of Jesus Christ and the redeeming benefits of the passion and death. The cross is a sign of both of Christ himself and of the faith of Christians. There's 149 verses in the scriptures about the cross. You could go through the Old Testament and the New Testament and find these things. In Luke 9, 23 through 24, it says this, and he said to them, All, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. 1 Corinthians 1.18 For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but those, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, I used to, and Pastor had said something not long ago, and I've really thought about it, uh, about the preaching of the gospel when men try to preach it. Uh, to the world, it just seems foolish. But it is the power of God. The Word of God will penetrate your heart, and it will change your life. Everyone in this room, everybody in this room, 
will have to come to the cross. Amen. Not going to get out of it. One day you're going to have to go to the cross. Can I get an amen? amen? The cross is where we encounter the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The Alpha, the Omega, the everlasting God, the one who is and who will ever be. Amen. amen. There at the cross, church, we are set free from the bondage of sin. We are set free from a sorrow, guilt, depression, and many other things in our life. At the cross, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin and releases the joy of the Lord in our lives. How many of us really had a lot of joy before you come to Christ? Before you come to the cross? I did for a brief time. Especially when I had a couple of drinks in me. But see, it doesn't, didn't bring peace. You can say, you, every one of us in this room can, can vouch to the fact that sin is pleasurable for a season, but there's a price to pay for sin. And I'm here to tell you, I know in my own life, if I could change it. I remember at 12 years old, when my whole family, we got saved at a Baptist church. It was called New Berlin Baptist back then. And uh, me, my mom, dad, and brother got saved in the same day. And I remember when I went down to that altar and I knelt down, it just felt like electricity going through my whole body. I didn't know what it was, but I knew God had touched me. And I served him after that. I served him for three years until I got around 15 or 16 years old. And guess what? I thought I knew everything. I thought I didn't have time for God. And when you get around that age, you know, uh, 17, 18, it's just like the way I feel. It's like I've had to tell little Ricky many times. I said, you've got to do what me and Nana tell you to do right now. I said, now, when you get 18 years old and you get out of the house and you get on your own, then it's up to you to take on the responsibility of what you want to be. Because all the, all the talking, all the teaching, all the praying is for a reason. But at 18 years old, you're a young adult and you need to act like an adult. And you need, we need to teach them this right here, this, this word. This is the only way they're going to make it. I can't imagine being a young person, especially in high school now, in the school, middle school now, what these young people have to go through. It's not like it was years ago. They have, to, they have a rough time, church.